Hello students, hypothalamus and pituitary gland are the main endocrine glands of the human body. In today's video, we will study basic structure and functions of hypothalamus and pituitary gland. Now look at this figure, hypothalamus shown here in green is a small area of the brain. It is termed as hypothalamus as it is located under the thalamus. Pituitary gland shown in the red is located just below the hypothalamus. Now size of pituitary gland is that of a pea. Its weight is around 500 milligram and pituitary gland is also called as hypophysis. Now pituitary gland is also termed as a master gland that is the master endocrine gland. Now hypothalamus is an important control center in the brain. It is made up of nervous tissue. Now main function of uh, hypothalamus is to regulate homeostasis. Now very important homeostasis is the proper balanced functioning and stability of biological processes in the body. Now this hypothalamus coordinates nervous system and the endocrine system. Now nervous system receives and convey information from, from brain to the body and vice versa that is from body to the brain while endocrine glands release hormones. Now based on the information received by the nervous system and the requirement of the body hypothalamus regulates release of hormones by the endocrine system. So this hypothalamus it coordinates the nervous system and the endocrine system. So now let's discuss relationship between hypothalamus and pituitary gland. Hypothalamus and pituitary gland act as a unit. Hypothalamus regulates functioning of pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is also called as a master gland and therefore pituitary gland in turn regulates functioning and thus commands most of the other endocrine glands. Now look at this figure. This is a zoomed diagram. It shows anatomical relationship between hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Now this is hypothalamus shown here in the uh, green color. It is made up of nervous tissue. Now pituitary gland, this is pituitary gland. It consists of two parts, anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. Now anterior pituitary or adenohypophysis is made up of glandular tissue while posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis is made up of nervous tissue. So hypothalamus is made up of nervous tissue and posterior pituitary is also made up of nervous tissue. Uh, now let's first discuss how hypothalamus regulates functioning of posterior pituitary. Now as already discussed posterior pituitary is made up of nervous tissue. Now in the hypothalamus, in the hypothalamus are present a group of nerve cell bodies called as nuclei. Now these nuclei in the hypothalamus synthesize two hormones namely antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. Now these hormones are transported along the neuronal pathway to the posterior pituitary and are stored here in the posterior pituitary. Now as per the requirement of body and nerve impulses received by the hypothalamus, hypothalamus triggers release of antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin from posterior pituitary in the blood. So posterior pituitary is an extension of hypothalamus and the functioning of posterior pituitary is regulated by the hypothalamus. Now antidiuretic hormone increases reabsorption of water in the kidneys and this increases the blood volume whereas oxytocin controls the uterus. It contracts the uterus during childbirth and oxytocin also stimulates release of milk from the breast. Now let's discuss how hypothalamus regulates functioning of anterior pituitary. Now in addition to antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin, hypothalamus also produces regulatory hormones. 
these are stimulatory as well as inhibitory hormones namely GHRH that is growth hormone releasing hormone then GHRIH growth hormone release inhibiting hormone then TRH thyrotropin releasing hormone CRH corticotropin releasing hormone PRH prolactin PIH prolactin inhibiting hormone then GNRH that is gonadotropin releasing hormone so all these hormones are the regulatory hormones that are synthesized in the hypothalamus now unlike posterior pituitary which is made up of nervous tissue anterior pituitary is made up of glandular tissue and it is connected to the hypothalamus by a network of blood capillaries now as per the requirement of body and nerve impulses received by hypothalamus hypothalamus triggers release of required regulatory hormone these hormones are sent to anterior pituitary by a network of capillaries called as pituitary portal system now these regulatory hormones regulate release of hormones by the anterior pituitary these are the hormones that are released by the anterior pituitary now growth hormone releasing hormone stimulates release of growth hormone by the anterior pituitary prh stimulates release of prolactin by the anterior pituitary similarly trh stimulates release of thyroid stimulating hormone by the anterior pituitary crh stimulates release of adrenocorticotrophic hormone by the anterior pituitary gonadotropin releasing hormone it stimulates the release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone by the anterior pituitary so this is how hypothalamus regulates the functioning of anterior pituitary now very important pituitary gland is called as a master gland now let's understand why pituitary gland is called as a master gland this is a very important question that is often asked in the university exam now as shown here in the figure anterior pituitary produces six hormones out of these six hormones four hormones shown here in the red are tropic hormones tsh acth fsh and lh are tropic hormones these are termed as tropic as they control secretion of other endocrine glands now tsh that is thyroid stimulating hormone controls thyroid gland it stimulates thyroid gland to produce hormones that is triiodothyronin t3 and thyroxin that is t4 similarly ACTH that is adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulates adrenal cortex to produce steroidal hormones similarly FSH and LH both stimulate testes in males and ovaries in females to produce reproductive hormones so this is how pituitary gland controls functioning and commands other endocrine glands and thus pituitary gland is truly called as the master gland uh, now let's summarize few important characteristic features of uh, posterior pituitary posterior pituitary is also called as neurohypophysis now as posterior pituitary is an extension of hypothalamus it is made up of nervous tissue posterior pituitary secretes two hormones namely oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone in short adh now these hormones are synthesized in the hypothalamus but are stored in the posterior pituitary now nerve impulses from hypothalamus trigger release of oxytocin and anti antidiuretic hormone from posterior pituitary into the blood that means uh, the signal comes from the hypothalamus as soon as the signal reaches the posterior pituitary posterior pituitary releases uh, two hormones 
namely oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone in the blood. Now let's study functions of oxytocin. Oxytocin has two important functions. It is required during childbirth and it is also required for the release of milk from the breast. So uh, oxytocin is released during childbirth. Now oxytocin stimulates contraction of uterine smooth muscles. So when the uterine smooth muscles contract, the uterus as a whole contracts uh, and this results into the childbirth. In addition to this, oxytocin is also released during breastfeeding. Oxytocin stimulates contraction of milk ducts and contraction of these milk ducts cause release of milk. Now after oxytocin, let's uh, uh, discuss functions of uh, antidiuretic hormone. Now very important, diuresis means increase in the volume of urine. So antidiuresis means reduction in the volume of urine. Look at this figure. Uh, this is the structure of a nephron. Now nephron as we all know is a functional unit of the uh, kidney. This is glomerulus. Uh, in the glomerulus is present the blood. This is the lumen of the nephron and these are the surrounding peritubular capillaries. So as we know blood in the glomerulus is filtered and the filtrate passes into the lumen. Now uh, the filtrate consists of around 90% water. Now antidiuretic hormone increases reabsorption of water from this filtrate into the peritubular capillaries. So water is reabsorbed in the blood and this increases the volume of blood. On the other hand, this causes reduction in the volume of urine. So there is reduced excretion of the urine and as there is increase in the blood volume, uh, as the antidiuretic hormone increases the blood volume, it increases the blood pressure and therefore antidiuretic hormone is also called as the vasopressin. So this is all about the anatomy and the functions of posterior pituitary. After anatomy and functioning of uh, posterior pituitary, look at this chart. It summarizes uh, functions of the hormones that are released by hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. It explains how hypothalamus regulates functioning of anterior pituitary. Now hypothalamus produces stimulatory as well as inhibitory hormones and these hormones further stimulate or inhibit release of hormones by the anterior pituitary. And all these hormones, uh, these are released in the blood. So hypothalamus produces GHRH, that is growth hormone releasing hormone. Now this hormone, that is GHRH, it stimulates anterior pituitary to secrete growth hormone. Growth hormone stimulates growth of the entire body, but it is specifically very important for stimulating the growth of bones and skeletal muscles. Hypothalamus also produces inhibitory hormone as per the requirement of body. For example, it produces GHRIH that is growth hormone release inhibiting hormone. Now this hormone inhibits the release of growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone from anterior pituitary. So the secretion of uh, growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone is suppressed. Now next to the, is the release of uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone that is TRH. Now this hormone stimulates anterior pituitary to release TSH that is thyroid stimulating hormone. Now very important to understand here that TSH is produced by anterior pituitary and TSH that is the thyroid stimulating hormone is a tropic hormone. It stimulates thyroid gland which is another endocrine gland to release 
hormones namely triiodothionin T3 and thyroxin in the blood. So pituitary gland is termed as a master gland because it produces tropic hormones like thyroid stimulating hormone which further stimulates other endocrine glands like here uh, TSH stimulates the thyroid gland. Uh, next hormone released by the hypothalamus is CRH that is corticotropin releasing hormone. Now CRH stimulates anterior pituitary to release ACTH that is adrenocorticotropic hormone. Now ACTH is again a tropic hormone. It stimulates adrenal cortex to secrete steroidal hormones namely glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids and androgen. So here anterior pituitary uh, is releasing the hormone TSH that is commanding thyroid gland and again anterior pituitary is releasing adrenocorticotropic hormone which is regulating the functioning of adrenal cortex. Another hormone released by hypothalamus is the prolactin releasing hormone that is PRH. PRH stimulates anterior pituitary to release prolactin that is PRL. Now prolactin is a lactogenic hormone, lacto refers to milk. So prolactin stimulate growth of breast tissue and it is also required for the production of milk. Hypothalamus also releases prolactin inhibiting hormone that is PIH. PIH inhibits release of prolactin by the anterior pituitary. So uh, growth of the breast tissue and milk production is suppressed. Another very important hormone that is produced by hypothalamus is luteinizing hormone releasing hormone in short LHRH. It is also termed as gonadotropin releasing hormone. Now this hormone stimulates release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone by anterior pituitary. Now these hormones further stimulate ovaries in females and testes in males. Now FSH stimulates testes to produce sperms. Similarly it stimulates ovaries to produce ovum. FSH also stimulates ovaries to produce female reproductive hormone that is estrogen. LH stimulates testes to produce male reproductive hormone that is testosterone. It also stimulates corpus luteum of ovaries to produce the female hormone progesterone. So these are the hormones which are produced by hypothalamus that regulates the functioning of anterior pituitary. Now very important to remember that anterior pituitary produces four tropic hormones namely TSH thyroid stimulating hormone that stimulates thyroid gland then ACTH that is adrenocorticotropic hormone that stimulates adrenal cortex then FSH and LH that stimulates testes in the males and ovaries in the females. So functioning of thyroid gland, adrenal cortex, then testes and ovaries is controlled and it, and it is regulated by the pituitary gland and therefore pituitary gland is called as the master gland. So this is all about hypothalamus pituitary gland their coordination, their structure and the release of hormones uh, by hypothalamus and pituitary and their functions. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.